Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of our own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, 
Now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. The word of the Lord. from the first letter of Peter. Now, who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated, but in your hearts sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting of the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear, so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, 
during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks.
In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Space is what keeps the world in balance. Space is what defines matter. Without space, individual quantities of matter don't exist. Our sense of self, our sense of community, our sense of reality, our sense of who we are in relationship to others is all dependent upon space. You may notice, now that you've been in quarantine for a couple of months, that you're either seeking more space or less space depending upon your situation. Too much of it, and you long to see the people whom you love. Too little, and you're ready to flee to the hills for some alone time. Space is something we take for granted in our lives. But space requires constant awareness, because space in reality, is a relational dance that we do with each and every object and person in our lives. Depending upon which partner we engage with, the dance looks different. Ever come across someone who invades your personal space? Someone who likes to stand just inches away from you when they talk to you? Nowadays, we are more than ever aware of how close someone is to us, who is in our space, who has violated our boundaries. Social distancing has brought our awareness of personal space to a new high. Space is defined partly by time. Right now, time has slowed down, in a sense. We've been accustomed to our fast-paced lives in our internet-driven world. Our days were filled with activities, with lots of choices, with busyness, with travel. Due to COVID-19, we're now spending our time differently. 
and our space has changed. And the more our time slows down, the more we become aware of our changes. No longer can we go out to the movies, attend concerts or sporting events, or gather for parties. Home is our new hangout. We talk to those who pass by the house just to engage with another person. And our families have suddenly been thrust into a pattern that our grandparents must have been familiar with, but we have not been. Spending evenings gathered around the news, sitting on the front porch, playing board games, cooking food, and gathering around the dinner table, talking about, well, everything imaginable. As we spend more time in close proximity to our closest family members, our spouses, our children, our partners, we find our relational dynamics are changing. Families are spending time together and getting to know each other in ways that we have never done before. For some, this increase in time may mean our marriages and families may be drawing closer together. For those in conflicted relationships, it may mean that we are forced either to confront issues and resolve them, or flee to separate rooms and risk further isolation. We are learning more about each other. We're forced into a shared reality sheltering against a shared invader. And we are relearning to value each other in new and surprising ways. Love has taken on a new meaning as we see each other day after day in a confined space. Limiting space, however, makes the dance of love more challenging as well. How can you create space within your own household? How can you honor individuality and difference within an increased spatial environment? These are all questions that require loving responses as we relearn to respect each other in our family sardine can. But love isn't just about confined space. It's also about distant space. Back in World War II, as young men left behind their wives and lovers and sisters and mothers to go and fight on distant shores on behalf of their country, they would often take pictures that they carried close to their hearts of their loved ones. Without Skype or FaceTime, they were limited to occasional letters and even more occasional visits during their long time away. Their family members had to spend months and months waiting, hoping they would be all right, longing to see them, biding their time until they would come home. When they did, it was cause for celebration. When they couldn't, people had to mourn without closure, grieve and hold memorials often without a body to view or a hand to hold. Children sometimes only saw their fathers after they had reached the age of four or even five. Families needed to adjust to new dynamics and changes from distant to personal space. Love is a dance that sometimes requires distance and sometimes requires close proximity. How well you can dance that dance will reveal how well that relationships can manage through changes and adversity. Jesus had spent three years in close proximity with his disciples when his death shocked them. 
He'd been ripped away from their sides and their small community was shattered. No longer would he be with them. They had just been in the midst of grief, in the midst of adjusting to a new kind of normal when Jesus returned. Jesus' post-resurrection appearances to his disciples required them to think of him in a new way, to readjust to him in ways that they were not accustomed to. And he told them that he was not back to stay, but only here for a brief visit. Soon, he would be returning to heaven to sit at the right hand of God. But he would send the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, to be their guide. In this way, he told them he would then be with them until the end of the age. But unless he would go, things could not progress. Jesus told them that he was going to prepare a place for all of them. When the time would come, they would know how to find him and how to follow him into the realms of eternity. Like a brief visit from afar that we endure with a confined relative, someone perhaps that we have to wave through a window but can't be close to, Jesus was there. And yet, he wasn't. He was alive and yet he could not be with them as he once was. No longer could he walk with them through the hills of Galilee or sit with them in a boat by the lake or engage with them in laughter or meals or conversation. And yet he could. Yet he would. Not in the way that they were accustomed to, but in a new kind of way. Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, would always be with them, guiding them, comforting them, talking with them, infusing them with trust and courage and strength. They may not see him in the flesh, but he would always be there with them. Our discipleship relationship with Jesus is much like the relationships we have with others. It's a love dance. Even when we can't see Jesus, we can feel the Holy Spirit with us. And we can trust that Jesus is merely a way for a time, preparing a place, a space for us to be with him in close proximity when the right time comes. In the meantime, we share our love of Jesus with the ones that we are close to, with our family, our loved ones, our children, our friends, and our neighbors. And we let them know that he's there. For the thing about Jesus is this. He is always there. In our minimal space, in our distances, in our close quarters, and in our community. As the Apostle John says in his first letter, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. While we wait in our homes and in our quarantines, we can know and trust that God is busy constructing a new reality for us. And when the time is right, we will emerge into it and adjust to it. Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, is like extra insurance. 
He fills our space when it gets to be too much. He creates space for us when we begin to feel confined. And he can show us the way to dance. For Jesus is our dancing partner, our destination, and our rest. May our homes be filled with peace, with music, and most of all, with the exquisite dance of love. Make it a point to practice your steps. For someday soon, you will dance not only in your home, but you will take your dance out into the world. Let us stand and profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful faithful ministers ministers of your word and sacrament. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest, that light perpetual shine on We praise you for all your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Be ever present, O Lord, with those who are suffering from the coronavirus. Strengthen all who are on the medical front lines against COVID-19. Enable those in authority to make good and timely decisions about matters related to the virus. 
Help us all to do what we can to slow the spread of the disease. Empower the church to be the church in creative, calm, and compassionate ways. And bring this pandemic to a swift end so that lives are spared. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. For yours is the majesty, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have done. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Welcome to St. Andrew's on this, the sixth Sunday of Easter. Today is also known as Rogation Sunday. It goes back a long time to about the fifth century when this time of the year developed in the church. What happens is that at this time of year, the days before the Ascension Day are the Rogation Days, including today as Rogation Sunday, Rogatio, Latin word for asking. And what it means is we're asking God for fair weather and good times for farmers and the planting of crops in the spring, and then a bountiful harvest comes summer and fall. In the church in England over the centuries, the vicar would go out and beat the bounds of the parish, going out and visiting all the fields of the farmers and asking for that blessing on the rogation days. It's a good thing to do today, too, during the next few days. Remember our farmers here in America and the terrible times that we're going through. Ask God to bless them and their crops this spring and summer, especially uh, during these uncertain times as far as the food chain goes. So do your rogatio, your asking, and your prayers. Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts.
gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen.